Today's topic is very deep. In today's century, the 21st century, there are still some people who still believe that the best form of discipline is to inflict pain. Pain on a minor. Pain on a friend. Pain from teacher to student. Pain from parent to child. Is it the right way to discipline a child? Is it the right way to correct bad behavior? Is corporal punishment indeed the way to correct when a child is going the wrong way? It, 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 a lot of things have changed. Even the children of today have changed. They, they, sometimes I'm looking at the young ones and I'm amazed at the sort of things they say, the way they reason. A lot has changed. And I don't think beating any child actually, you know, achieves anything. The children of today, they're so wise, they're so sharp. They, they have a mind of their own and they need, there has to be some form of, you know, some form of fear or punishment that they would expect which would deter them from doing the wrong things because it doesn't matter how much you talk to a child. I'm talking about the children of today and everything. They just look at you and after what they say, she's, she's, she's only going to talk. I believe that when you create fear, you don't even get the truth from the children because when they are afraid, they just tell you what you want to hear to minimize their punishment. It's when I've told you something once, twice, three times and you don't listen. Then Mr. Cable has to come. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Amazons. Corporal punishment involves the deliberate infliction of pain as retribution for an offense or for the purpose of disciplining or reforming a wrongdoer or bad behavior. Quite a few people support corporal punishment as a solid form of education. On the other hand, there is also a large number of people who denounce corporal punishment as cruel and inhuman. And of course, there are people who are undecided. Do we spare the rod and spoil the child? How effective or relevant is the rod in today's world? Is it time to throw away the rod or should we still continue to believe in not throwing away the rod and not spoiling the child? Welcome to the Amazons. Today's topic is very deep. In today's century, the 21st century, there are still some people who still believe that the best form of discipline is to inflict pain. Pain on a minor, pain on a friend, pain from teacher to student, pain from parent to child. Is it the right way to discipline a child? Is it the right way to correct bad behavior? Is corporal punishment indeed the way to correct when a child is going the wrong way? You know, I cannot be more delightful. Welcome to the Amazons and welcome the audience. I know <laughs> most members of our audience can relate to what I'm saying. You know, at one, point or, uh, at one point or the other, we have all been, I have been, you know, a victim of corporal punishment. And the, 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 the best time that my father would do it is when you are asleep. Really? Come and tap you. You know you are in trouble. So when you have erred, when you know you have done something wrong, you are afraid to close your eyes because you are expecting that any minute from now you'll be tapped and woken up and you will be given the whooping of your life. That's double you know? punishment. It's so <laughs> <laughs> so that, that was my own experience. At that time, I didn't see it as, you know, as, I didn't see it as punishment. I just thought, okay, maybe this is the best way that, you know, these people know how to, how to correct bad behavior. And as, 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 also, it also, you know, it, 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 it cautioned me anytime I was going to do something wrong because I know there will be pain after it. So I never did it. So that was not spoiling the child and not sparing the rod. So it achieved the purpose. But that was back then. How many years ago? A long time ago. Is this relevant now? Was it relevant then? Bimbo, I'll start with you. 
it, 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 a lot of things have changed. Even the children of today have changed. They, sometimes I'm looking at the young ones and I'm amazed at the sort of things they say, the way they reason. A lot has changed. And I don't think beating any child actually, you know, achieves anything. I mean, growing up, I was an extremely stubborn child. All the things I wasn't supposed to do, I did. Because I was a top boy. I loved to climb trees. I loved jumping fences. I loved doing all kinds of, you know, physical things. And my mom just couldn't understand it. But the thing with my mom is she had a balance. There were certain things she would do that she would beat you for. Certain things you would do. She would just sit down with you and start to talk. And by the time she's done with you, your eyes are red from crying and you're not going to do that again. At one point in time, I did something wrong. And my mom said to me, you know, I'm not going to beat you for this. I just need you to write a letter and tell God what you've done. And it was huge because God is all seen. He's there at every point in time. So by just writing a letter to God, made sure that I never tried it again. But today, kids today are different. I don't know if it's because of the, you know, the fact that TV, the, the fact that they're watching different kinds of programs, or it's something that we give them from the womb, or it's what they eat, but they're really sharp. They know so much, they understand so much. I think it's better to just sit down and have a discussion I, with I, them. Have a discussion with them. Dolapo. A couple of punishments, I will be honest, I used to smack my kids. I smacked them on the bone. You know, so, but I don't use whips and, and all that, but you will get a smack. And when I say I'm going to smack you, they know what smacking means. Because I still think that it doesn't matter how much, especially like Bimba said, the children of today, they're so wise, they're so sharp. They, they have a mind of their own. And they need, there has to be some form of, you know, some form of fear or punishment that they would expect, which would deter them from doing the wrong things. Because it doesn't matter how much you talk to a child. I'm talking about the children of today and everything. They just look at you and after what they say, she's, she's, she's only going to talk. Mm -hmm. And then they will repeat the same thing. And sometimes some of them actually goad you. The more you talk to them, the more they do that thing until you actually smack them or look for a way to control them. But in as much as I say I used to smack them, like I said, I used to smack them. But I, I don't do that anymore because there's no point. Because, you know, I think they're quite disciplined and they know that they can't go, they can't go to certain length, extent. But at the same time, I still think in some cases, you still have to apply it, but you have to do it in such a way that the result is not to inflict punishment, rather to let the child know that what they've done is wrong. We'll go for a break now. When we come back, really, we'll be having our guests in the studio, uh, some are parents, and some of our guests today will, add, will have a school vice principal in, in, uh, in the house today. We also have uh, somebody who works with uh, making, you know, uh, uh, working with correcting behavior for children. You are watching the Amazons and the topic we are discussing today really is corporal punishment. Is it time to throw away the rod? This is the topic today on the Amazons. After the break. There is this guy in my house called Mr. Kebu. That's the, the USB cord for my charger. Once Mr. Cable comes out, everybody behaves. And when <laughs> Mr. Cable comes out, I'll ask you, uh, do you know what I'm about to do? Is it wrong? They say, no. Why is it not wrong? Uh, the Bible says, spare the rod and, and spoil the child. <laughs> so I say, very good. So you know what I'm doing is biblical. I'm not in support of it at all. In fact, the way it was narrated the home, the picture I have, is like a barrack. And I'm like, <laughs> even sitting next to him, I believe that I have to respect my own side of the chair. But seriously speaking, I believe that direct communication with the children will help them. back to the Amazons, where today we are discussing corporal punishment, and we ask the question, is it time to throw away the rod? Well, we, we have two fathers who will be joining us, you know, shortly on set to come and tell us, really, whether it is still relevant to have to discipline a child uh, using corporal punishment, or really, is it time to throw away the rod and spoil the child, or is it still relevant? to keep the road and make, that, make sure that the child is on a straight line. Please welcome Prince Adekunle Adelodun and Mr. Femi Davis, who are both fathers. <laughs> Mr. Dr. 
Prince Adilodun, they say you, you are a disciplinarian. What does that mean? Uh, first and foremost, I'd like to thank the modern mothers who are still in the process of doing the things they need to do today are still able to take care of the children and keep the home front. Uh, I'm a disciplinarian, but it doesn't mean my home is a military camp. <laughs> it just means that there is order in the house. There has to be one voice that is the lead voice. It has to be me. I have three wonderful boys. And uh, if order is not established in the house, I guarantee you, Oshodi will be saner than my house. <laughs> <laughs> so how do you maintain that order, the order and the discipline in the home with three boys? First thing I did was to, everything they have that they play with, their toys and all those things, I attach responsibilities to those things. So you know, if you don't do what you are supposed to do, you are not getting the chance to play with your stuff. So they know if homework is not done and done well, from Monday till Friday, checked, and I get a report from school that is okay, you can't touch the PlayStation. If your own homework is not done and the other person's homework is done, that person will play home station, it will be playing the PlayStation while you are watching. So nobody wants to be left out in the process of, they, they want to enjoy themselves. So I just tie everything to a responsibility and they know that that responsibility has to be done for them to be able to get the reward. So have you ever applied the rod? in the instance of maintaining uh, discipline and order in your home? There is this guy in my house called Mr. Kebo. That's the, the USB cord for my charger. Once Mr. Kebo comes out, everybody behaves. And when Mr. <laughs> Kebo comes out, I'll ask you, uh, do you know what I'm about to do? Is it wrong? I say, no. Why is it not wrong? Uh, the Bible says, Spare the rod and, and spoil the child. <laughs> so I said, very good. So you know what I'm doing is biblical, but I want to beat you. But the important thing is to explain to them why I am beating them. So I tell you, this is the reason, and this is the result of your actions. So I have no problems with it. I don't do it often. Uh, Naughty Corner takes care of the, of the other part, and Mr. Cable takes care of the extreme situations. But I do use Mr. Cable, but not very often. Mr. Davis, I'll come to you now. <laughs> your own method may not be that of Mr. Cable or Def the Naughty Corner. Definitely. Okay, but really, what is your stand on using the rod, you know, as a form of discipline? I'm not in support of it at all. In fact, the way it was narrated the home, the picture I have is like a barrack, and I'm like, even sitting next to him, I believe that I have to respect my own side of the chair. But seriously speaking, I believe that direct communication with the children will help them. I have a simple nature, which I probably inherited from my dad. My dad's form of physical communication is greater than the punishment. If he says, you know that you are in trouble. If he says, hmm, you know that. So it piles up. So that point that by the time he beats you, you know that you deserve that punishment. I believe that when you create fear, you don't even get the truth from the children. Because when they are afraid, they just tell you what you want to hear to minimize their punishment. So I usually believe that communicate with them, relate with them. There are stubborn ones. Maybe I have not been blessed with one. I can probably have to go to the extreme. And I have a beautiful daughter. The, our cousin stays with, stay with us. So I think I'm able to manage that with that simple nature, and I keep telling the madam of the house, stop using me as a threat. Because the women have this way of saying, when your daddy comes, don't make the daddy look like the wicked one. <laughs> if they are wrong, correct them immediately. Don't suspend punishment or make it look like, hey, I to reported this person to you. You are not taking any action. Why? No, no, no. My own is, are, are you wrong? Yes. Why did you do it? There is always something called motive. If I know the motive and the thing that you need to correct, what's important is that this thing you do, don't do it again. 
But if it has to be continuous, then you have to probably impose one or two sanctions. You have a daughter. Do you have any son? No. Sometimes I find that fathers are actually quite lenient with their daughters. No, I will tell you my understanding. How you raise a male child is different from how you raise a female child. Yes. The male child must be made to conform. Now, the female child must be made to see things. Because if she goes out, as in out of the house, out of into her own relationship into the world, with that deviant attitude, it will affect our own marriage too. Which brings me to the question, really, that the circumstances in the home, will it be, uh, you know, uh, the circumstances will decide the kind of, the form of punishment to use for uh, uh, correcting bad behavior. In the case of uh, Mr. Adilodun, right, he has three boys. You have a daughter. Three boys in a home, you know, <laughs> one boy, two boys, you know, that enough, could be enough of uh, naughty behavior. Then you now have three. So, Mr. Cable. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Cable, who is, you know, will be, will, be, will be close by in every of those situations. He doesn't use Mr. Cable all the time, but the boys know that once Mr. Cable surfaces, there's, there, it's there's like some... It's like your father's, hmm. <laughs> but the, the, my own understanding, again, is this, because we were, we were like nine, all male. We don't have any female in our house. And my dad tried looking for a female. That's how we got to nine. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> and despite, no matter how, that, that's in, that was an environment that I could understand. I was the fourth son. So I grew up even taking care of the younger ones. My dad, you won't hear his voice. You understand? Because I believe that the mother has the initial role of, because the mother, shut up, leave that world, don't go there. Because the attitude is usually coming to report the other person. Eh, he beat me. Eh, he didn't. By the time you put them in check, in terms of, because I understand that children will always be children, and they know how to lie. The moment, the moment you put something that looks like a threat, then they will just be putting up drama to you. Because who spoiled this thing? I don't know. So what do you do? You want to beat everybody. <laughs> <laughs> so at what point, really, do you decide to, uh, you know, at what point do you decide to say, I want to use a rod now? What can be that behavior in a child? At, at, you know, what... what would warrant the circumstance of you wanting to use a rod. We are not saying, uh, you know, using the rod is not permissible at all, but how do you draw the line between using the rod, you know, as a form of correction and using the rod as a form of punishment that would go to the extreme? How do you draw the line, uh, Mr. Falodun? For example, for me, you cannot be disrespectful to your elders and you cannot steal. Lying, sometimes I understand the motives behind lying, the fear of... For example, let me give you an answer. I've bought three TVs in two years for my sitting room. My boys, they are crazy about football. So the last one they broke, I was in my room, and the eldest one comes to the room, Daddy, there's a problem. I said, what happened? He said, Koye broke the TV. So I went outside, I saw the TV had like 25 million megapixels. Everything was just, I said, okay, very good. So I went to my room, because I didn't want to react at that moment. This particular TV was just like three months old. So I went to my room, and the three of them came to my room like 10, 15 minutes later, and said, Daddy, we have a proposition for you. And I said, what's that? So we think you should remove the TV in your room <laughs> and put it in the sitting room to replace the one we broke. If I had reacted to beat them at that point, we would have ended up in the hospital. <laughs> <laughs> so I just said, I said, you know what? Guys, let's go to the sitting room. So I sat the three of them on the couch, put on the TV. I said, you're going to watch this TV for three hours. After three hours, you come and tell me what you saw. So they came back. And they're like, Daddy, we're sorry. You can keep the TV in your room. Say, what did you see on the TV? Say, we didn't see anything. And so, do you think after what happened, you should have come to demand for my own TV? They said, no. But the point is, when I asked who did it, everybody was quiet. Everybody knew who did it. But when I started saying, okay, pack your PS, put it in my room, pack this, put it in my room, it came out. Uh, Daddy, I'm the one that did it. 
in that kind of situation, I encourage them to be able to speak the truth. Yes. That if you speak the truth, the consequences are going to be lesser than when you lie and I catch you lying. So that's what I do with them. But it's when I've told you something once, twice, three times, and you don't listen, then Mr. Cable has to come. <laughs> I, I'm going to ask a question because we are only humans. Even, even parents are human beings. And of course, we, we do get frustrated and we do get upset. And like a TV, that's a third TV set. You must have been upset. And I'm glad you said you went into your room and you stayed there so that you wouldn't react. Now, is there anything else that we can do? Because some parents don't, they react first. You know, Just right there. They react right there and then. And then uh, an hour later, you're regretting your actions because you've been too harsh with the children. As a father, is there a particular trick that you use to help calm you down? Uh, maybe part of my nature as well. But anybody that feels they have a lot of anger in them should have three boys and try to deal with everything <laughs> the three boys do in anger. You, you burn out. So it got to a point where I, I would just leave them in the sitting room and move all the dangerous objects and just stay in my room and lock the door. And can differentiate between cry that is injury, the cry that is just me and somebody having a tiff and all that. But as a parent, you should know that you cannot react to everything every time. You come home, of course, traffic, work, everything, and you're just tired and something like that comes up. As a parent, you train yourself as well. And just take that deep breath and maybe count to 10. <laughs> Go somewhere quiet. Because if you're going to react to everything that they are going to do, you... At, at what point, Mr. Davis, does um, discipline become abuse? To anybody, either a child or, you know, or a young adult, at what point? I think when the basic rules of the house is being... Uh, when somebody behaves like... I don't care about this rule. I can imagine going to the pot of soup to take meat. That one is not negotiable. That's the height. You can ask. And if you are told no, a no means no. So if you are now caught going behind, the act behind it is what you want to react to. That's what you want to correct. Because basically what the child wants is going from what you want for the child. But there must be a level at which both of you will understand that this is what you need. A child wants sugar. A child likes Coke. No matter how you love that child, you cannot say, okay, take three bottles of Coke every day because I love you. No. You know why you will insist that this child should not take this Coca-Cola. So there are basic rules that. And you see, parents should not waste time, waste so much um, time about laws. If you do this, some parents say, I will kill you. The child knows you can't kill. Definitely. <laughs> so killing is out of the option. Yes. Look for moderate but very, very sustainable punishments that they know. I remember when my daughter was just four years old. She did something wrong. I can't even, her mom reported her. I just went blank. I was not talking to her. I didn't give her face for a period. She came to me, said that, anytime I do something wrong, beat me. Please don't ignore me. You understand? So I believe that when you, have the, when you know the nature of the kind of child you are probably dealing with, you know the kind of punishment you want to, act, to apply because there must be rules in the house. Stealing is one of them. The dangerous, what you said, the dangerous things in the home, because going to play with electricity is not, you won't show it because I love the child. You can lose your fuse. Because this is somebody, I, I, the, the cousin came to our house one day and I said, me and you in this house, no way. I have to take you out because it's safer for me to be outside with him than when we're at home. We now went to another friend's house. It was not like, how can you say you can't deal with this boy? He said, I, I can't deal with him. He said, I leave him with me. In 10 minutes, he called me. Come and take your boy. I said, what happened? He was going towards the transformer. <laughs> I mean, in that wise, what do you want? If you shout, he will run into the transformer. you want this man not to use Mr. Cable? <laughs> no, three, what can happen? Months. That's why I said, it depends on the nature of the child. Now, if beating the child, might not warn him about going towards that transformer. Because it's like, you probably like a, a candle, until the, 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 get, the child gets burnt with that light, you will never respect light. <laughs> Thank you, it's been, it's, been, it's been really interesting speaking with you, uh, Prince Adekunle Adelodun. 
and Mr. Femi Davis. Thank you Pleasure so, so here. very much. Thank we'll you so much. We'll be back after the break. We are still looking at uh, corporal punishment. Is it time to throw away the rod? Or do we also still keep the rod, but use it sparingly and effectively to correct bad behavior? We'll be back after the break. You are still watching Amazon. <laughs> Uh, we should ask ourselves, like the Bible said, says since God does not change, nothing has changed also in this world. It continues from age to age, age to age. We only use our scientific mind to modify things. It still happens in the schools. Okay. And it it's still not happen. in all schools. There's some schools that you cannot, the, the teachers, nobody's allowed to touch the children. Yes, yeah, she said in my school. In your school. In yes. Okay. In the school. <laughs> I want to ask, were you punished as a child? Uh, not as bad as most people. I, I think I had it easy because I was um, the last born in the, in the house. Not as and bad so, in what sense? You think it's I was, a, you... Never, I was never flogged. Mm, yes, my dad was. Terrible. You were never flogged. You were never smart. Your ears were, pulled, were never no, none pulled of that. Or I, I was lucky not either. to have all that because I was really young. Really? Well, my brother, I have boys before me. And so they got all the punishments. And anytime anything happened, I just hide behind them and just point at them like they're the ones who did it. <laughs> and so they will get the punishment and the beating. So I guess I would say that I was, I was spared the rod. Welcome back to the Amazons, where we are discussing today corporal punishment. Is it time to throw away the rod and spoil the child, or should we still keep the rod and use it sparingly or effectively to correct bad behavior in our wards or children? Corporal punishment indeed are very common in schools, and even up till tomorrow, they still use the rod. The rod is used very frequently in our schools. And we also have uh, a child care solution provider who will be coming to talk to us about alternative, really, to corporal punishment. Please welcome Mrs. Somi Obum, a child care solution provider, and Mr. Ann Kerry, Vice Principal, Norwood uh, College here in Ikeja. Welcome to Amazon. Thank you so much for joining us on the Amazon. Please have a seat. Welcome to the Amazon, where we are talking today about uh, whether it is time to throw away the rod, really, and then spoil the child, or use the rod effectively to communicate with the child for bad behavior. Um, Mr. Kerry, Vice Principal, Norwood College, Kedja. When I was in school, bad behavior, Assembly in the morning, in front of everybody, the principal calls you out. The cane is standing by, very close, and you are there. This is what you have done. It's read out in, the, in front of the whole, as the whole school, you know. Even that alone was physical punishment, you know. And then they go whacking you. Maybe six strokes of the cane on your palm, you know. And they tell you not to cry, not to scream, so you are there. You know, so does it still happen today in schools, Mr. Kerry? Do you still use the rod <laughs> to correct bad behavior? All right. <laughs> Thank you very much uh, for that question. Uh, we should ask ourselves, like the Bible said, since, since God does not change, nothing has changed also in this world. It continues from age to age, age to age. We only use our scientific mind to modify things. It still happens in the schools. Okay. And it it's not in all schools. There's some schools that you cannot, the, the teachers, nobody's allowed to touch the children. Yes, she said in my school. In your school. In yes, okay. in the school. <laughs> <laughs> but is that, the only, is that the only alternative, really? Is that the only option no, for you? but let's just define it. it. When I say it happens in my school, because the assembly ground, like you rightly mentioned, is where morals are taught before you go into the class. And the morals... We believe that you will be taught on the assembly ground. We guide you somehow throughout the day from flattening the school rules and regulations. So if a child 
is fond of skipping the assembly halls, as assembly ground rather. That means the child is refusing that which is supposed to mold him. And definitely that child is going to flood the school rules. So it is, you know, incumbent on the teacher or the principal to enforce the students to make sure they attend the assembly. So if you do that now in our school, we don't just flog like that. When you come, there are several corporal punishments you can face. The alternative ones. Yeah. What about for late coming? What is the, what is the discipline for late coming? Mm, late coming, that is, you're late to the assembly hall. You're late to school, you're, you're late, late to, to the school. assembly hall. Yes. So you may, you, may pick, you may pick the bin, or you may be asked to kneel down in front of the assembly, so others will see you, and not every child wants to kneel down in front of the assembly and see everybody looking at, look at the dissident child that refused to come early to school. And everything we do it is caveat emptor. If you let me, the, some parents will come at it. This my child is very stubborn now. This is what he or she does at home. Please make sure you don't bend it. Give it to her. You note it then. Sometimes we'll call them, the parents, in the PTA, and say, okay, ah, this is what we found out among your children with us over here. And I know you don't like it. They will, you, will, you will be surprised the suggestion they will, they will come up with using the corporal punishment as the, the tool to deter the children from doing the, the contrary. Okay. So, me, you are a child care solution provider. What does that mean? Is, is this a, a, a solution to uh, an alternative to corporal punishment? <laughs> <laughs> no, not at all. It's basically um, bringing solutions to child care issues uh, for working parents and for people who have events and have the issues of dealing with the kids at the uh, venues or parents who are working and find it difficult to leave the kids with the nannies or with um, relatives or with friends. Now it still comes back down to the whole corporate punishment because we find that these par um, carers, nannies or friends or whoever, tend to discipline the child or children in ways that the parents may not agree with. But the parents are not there to watch this happen. They are busy wherever they are at work or they have some event or function to attend to. And they have the kids at home because they have no one else to take care of them for them or they can't do it themselves or they can't have the kids at the venue um, to be looked after and they can always monitor um, the child. So they have these carers at home who care less how um, the child is being brought up. And their own is just to be like, okay, you sit down there, mommy's not here, so we're going to have to make sure that you're quiet, don't disturb me, I want to watch TV or I want to do this or that. But when the parent comes, they're all nice and, and chummy with the child. And it may not be the case for all families and all homes, but it actually happens. And so we're there to create this child care solution for people who have such issues where you need to have your kids somewhere where you feel comfortable and mm. safe. You know, something just yes. struck me now while you were saying something about um, uh, maids and care, uh, carers who uh, go as far as, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, using corporal punishment, you yes. know, as a form of correction to the wards and children they are supposed to look after. You know, can that be as a result of the fact that they also see parents use this to correct the child, uh, to the child or the children at home? Would that, could that also be it a reason the way why? That they were brought up. They could come from homes where their parents actually disciplined them with canes, with belts, and gave them serious punishment. And it's something that they're used to, and they felt, okay, this is the best way to actually correct a child. They know they don't know any better. So it's, it's for us who are more enlightened to actually educate them, if possible, if they're actually ready to change, mm -hmm. to inflict such... Um, not to inflict such punishment on do, children do you, just Do you corrective. see where I'm coming from when I say <laughs> this thing? I mean, I, 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 I'm not saying... I, I apply corporal punishment, but obviously to a certain degree. degree but yes. at the same time, just like you said, nannies, you've had cases of nannies that will beat a child to a state. Of, some nannies beat children that cannot talk. Talk, exactly. They do it. The minute you step out, they will hit the child and say, your mother said this to me, your mother said that to that. So for me, I, I just believe that it's my role, it's my duty to look at, you know, to train my child. The best and I can apply want, yes. what I want to, but I don't see why anybody should lay a finger on my exactly. child. Exactly. That's my opinion. I, I want to ask, were you punished as a child? Not as bad as most people. I, I think I had it easy because I was um, the last born in the, in the house. Not as and bad so, in what sense? You think it's I was, a, you... Never, I was never flogged. Mm, yes, my dad was. Terrible. You were never flogged. You were never smart. Your ears were, pulled, were never no, none of that. Or I, I was lucky not yeah. to have all that because I was really young. Really, well, my brother. I have boys before me, 
And so they got all the punishments. And anytime anything happened, I just hide behind them and just point at them like they're the ones who do this. <laughs> and so they will get the punishment and the beating. So I guess I would say that I was, I was spared the rod. Corporal punishment, if you, if, if for a student bad behavior, do you give them option? Do you want to be caned or, you know, option B? Let me just come in there now. If you give the child option, he, will choose, he or she will choose the easiest. If possible, tell you, don't do it yourself. That means you are telling him, whenever you commit any crime at all, you are free to decide your, your case, and you, anyhow you like, you do it. And the child is going to tell you tomorrow, say, ah, after all, I committed this. OK, let me wait for her. He will write it for you, or she will write it. Mary will write it for you, saying, mommy or uncle, this is the punishment I'm going to get for this thing I did. Take it or leave it. <laughs> OK. So Just before we come back to you, <laughs> you I'd like, I like to, to talk to the, member of the members of the audience. i just take one, two, three questions. Very briefly, tell us your own experience. Number one, if you don't have any experience, tell us what you think about corporal punishment. One sentence. So number one, your name, please. My Walania is my name. From my own perspectives, bringing it back, from, uh, bringing it back home, right from the school this time, um, I believe you can actually spare the rod, you understand, by talking to your child, but there are some certain age whereby you start disciplining the child, you understand? So once the child knows my dad can't take rubbish, my mom can't take rubbish, fine, from there, he or she takes it up, you understand? So in a situation whereby you and your mom goes out somewhere, like you guys want to get something, and you meet someone that can give you something or someone you can collect something from, and mom has told you, don't collect anything from this person. And your mom was like, um, Okay, Junior, eat. And you're like, looking at your mom. Why are you looking at me? Eat. And the person is look, trying to like, um, Junior is looking at the other person and the mom do, does like this, like, once you try it, you understand? And later on, the child is like, eat now. Yeah, I told you to eat. Eat very, very well. Eat very, very, you understand? So Junior knows this very, very well means to bad daily. I will beat you very, very well. You understand? So that's just it. So there are some signs that you give your children. Exactly. You, you understand? That, so you don't really you know that that is corporal punishment if you do that. <laughs> OK. <laughs> All right. Next person, please. My name is Mura Mura Kenyo. OK. Um, I think uh, corporal punishment is not the best method to correct a child. Like, for instance, from my a personal experience, um, somebody came to my house some years ago and told my brother that my father asked him to bring the television and, the, and my brother said, okay, is it my father? Okay, take it. You understand? And my dad came to discover that it was a thief. And then you are the eldest. How could you do such a thing? He used Koboko to deal with my brother. Now, there was a day my father was not around and I was so hungry. Now, I, then we don't use spoon to eat. We use our fist. Now, I went into the pot to take a piece of fish. I could wave you with my left hand, but look at my right hand. Now, it was my brother who did this. Because he knew that if he uses the whip, you understand, it might not be as painful as I will feel the, 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 um, as in the weight of what I've done. So he thought he could do something else, you understand? So he set off the fire on the stove and himself and two of the other of his uh, you know, brothers had to do this. You understand? I can only live with this. You understand kind of thing? Just to remember that it's not good to steal, but yet should this have been the what? The solution. Because after six months, I still stole another thing. Because I know <laughs> if you can do this thing to me and I did not die, then I think probably, except you use a pistol and get my brains off. So that, that corporal punishment was to the extreme. It was to the extreme, exactly. which is what we are saying here, that corporal punishment is not the one that should inflict physical pain and, you know, uh, and maim you. This is what, what has happened to you. It is rather unfortunate. Corporal punishment should be in the, in the uh, uh, you know, the ones that will inflict pain and make corrections. Pain, not, not physically, but emotionally. Pains that you can deal with. You know, what has happened to you now is to the extreme. And it should not be encouraged by anyone. Thank you so much, Sumi Obum and Mr. And, uh, Mr. and Kerry. Thank you so, so very much for, you know, being a part of our program it's today. It's a pleasure. And, 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 you know, I, I'm just lost for words because of the, you know, the two, uh, you know, extreme, uh, cases. extreme, extreme cases. cases that we have from, 
from members of the audience. I'm, I'm, I'm really stunned. Uh, we'll just take a short break now and we'll be back. Welcome back to the Amazons, where we have talked about corporal punishment. Is it time to throw away the rod? You know, I, 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 I started this, um, this topic beside this discussion on, you know, um, looking at the positives and the, you know, the negatives of, and we, we are just going to end it on a very, you know, a reflective mood after having listened to two members of our audiences, uh, have, having a rethink. You know, should corporal punishment still be, you know, a weapon or a tool for correcting bad behavior, Bimbo? Uh, you, know, you know, honestly, like, I, I, I've, I've talked about both sides, using corporal punishment and, you know, not using. Uh, the truth of the matter is that, yeah, some children are naturally stubborn. I was. You're just going to have to find a way to communicate with them. I think communication is key. Talking to children is key. Corporal punishment, it, because we can't put sanctions on them, we can't say, okay, this is the depth, this is the width, this is, you can't do that. So maybe at the end of the day, we should scrap it because we have, we, we had extreme, we talked about, we've seen ex extreme cases today. So I, I, I just say, you know, find a way to communicate with your child. Let's leave corporal punishment out of it. <laughs> I mean, my position on the issue, like, like on, on corporal punishment, like I said earlier on, is, I mean, there must be, for every crime, for, for every crime, there must be some kind of retribution. A child needs to understand that there are certain level and certain borderline that they cannot cross. And in order sometimes to do that with children, they must have something that they fear. But at the same time, I, do, I, I just believe that, I mean, in the case of one of the uh, one of the audience, what they said, it was an, a brother that inflicted such horrible, you know, thing on another brother. And I, I just feel if it's going to be done at all, it should be done by the parent. Then the parent can be responsible for anything that comes out of it rather than throw it out there and say, you know, what well, nannies, teachers, you can beat up my child if they do something wrong. That's my own opinion. Okay. Well, uh, you know, the, our tradition on this program is to look at both sides of the coin. The decision really is not for us to make. It is just for us to give you the information to put you in a better state to be, you know, better informed about the decisions that you make. We are not here to tell you whether you should use the rod on anyone or whether you should, you should spare it. If you must use it, at what point do you, do you draw the line between correcting bad behavior and brutality? Brutality in the form of corporal punishment should not be encouraged at all. It is an extreme case of corporal punishment. Do you want to go down that road with your child? Do you want to go down that road with your sibling? Think again the next time you pick up the rod in order to correct a bad behavior. We'll see you again next time. Bye-bye.